I want to share with you six of the basic mysteries that God has structured into his wisdom for your rising. That when you know them and hold on to them, no matter what the devil does, he can't stop you. The strategy for lifting men is a mystery. And if you know it, blessed are you. Because the presence of the devil, the antics of the devil, the attacks of the devil, will all become part of the resources God will use to lift you up. Because at that level, all things will work together for your good. And so what are the spiritual systems that are put in place for the rising of men? Number one is called ordination. Because God knows that the devil will come for everyone. He wrote the destiny of everyone before they were born. So if they find that destiny and they are working in it, there is an insurance policy that is put in place to ensure that the operation of the devil can't stop them. So everyone born into the atrium has an insurance system protecting his rising. The only problem people have that makes them end up in frustration is that they step out of ordination. And I will tell you, the devil is not joking about this matter. Your study about Jesus, before Jesus was born, astrologers saw his star from the east. And they traced him. He was just eight days on earth. They knew the exact location where he was. And they came there. And even when his mother, his father, and no prophet knew who he was, these guys x-rayed his destiny correctly and said he's a king. Before the prophets could pick him, before he was even dedicated on the altar, the devil had traced him. Said, this is a king. And because they saw him and made the mistake of telling Herod, see the way the devil works. Herod did not look for one month old babies. This guy was just eight days old. The devil created a long buffer. Every child under the age of two, kill him. I don't want to give any chance. I don't want to allow any lapse. This young boy, they said is a king. I don't know where he's coming from. I don't know what he represents. But kill every child that is two years old. So that he will, we will not make the mistake of missing him. In case they didn't calculate his date of birth well. Let's create a good enough buffer. So that he must be included. But because the Lord was functioning by the dictates of ordination, there was enough insurance. If you are working in ordination, if angels need to be mobilized, they'll be mobilized. If men need to dream, they will dream. If systems need to shake, they will shake, but it won't go down. And we saw that every time Jesus celebrated his birthday, if he ever did, he was the only person in his generation. Because the devil wiped off everybody. The only thing that kept him was ordination. And that was how he lived throughout his life. Every step Jesus took, you will see that it was spoken by Isaiah, by Jeremiah. So everything he was doing, including where Jesus was living, was captured in prophecy. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. So he followed the dictates of ordination because he knew that was his insurance. And so when a man finds ordination, his rising is a must. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, it said, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you to be a prophet. I know all the battles of prophets, but you will fulfill destiny because it's an ordination. I ordained you to be a prophet. Listen, the greatest manipulations of life find expression in the corridors of ordination. Number two, what is the key, the secret for rising? Consecration. Every ordination comes with a consecration. When you see the life of Joseph, the reason he passed through zigzag kind of pathways, yet he arrived, was because his consecration was intact. Genesis 39 verse 9. How can I do this evil? and sin against God. The day you violate consecration, that day you change your path of destiny. Because every suggestion of compromise is to reroute you from the path of ordination. 
Hope you know if Joseph slept with Potiphar's wife, he would have become the chief houseboy. And that would have become the zenith of his life. There would never have been anything like throne or palace. Because he would have rerouted himself. And there's nothing God would have done. God rather would have raised another one in his stead. Any man who wants to rise must take consecration as a life and death matter. It's rather you die keeping your consecration than to compromise to receive momentary breakthroughs. Those breakthroughs are deceptions. They are a mirage that takes you away from destiny. Hardship doesn't kill anybody. It trains those who are ready to grow and those who are not ready, it gives them an opportunity to compromise. One will enter destiny, another one will fall out of destiny. Keep your consecration. There is something about consecration that becomes the basis for the lifting of men. There is something about consecration. Consecration. The second mystery for rising. The third mystery for rising is seasons. When God wants to lift a man, he occasions a season. When that season comes, the line suddenly begins to fall for you in pleasant places. The way season works is that you don't even need to do anything. All you need to do is to be aligned. And the lines are just falling in pleasant places. Look at Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. A prophet rose up and said, A virgin shall give birth. He didn't call anybody's name. A virgin shall give birth. He just spoke something and created a futuristic season. A virgin shall give birth. She shall bear a son. His name shall be called Emmanuel. And people were walking through time until that season came. The moment that season came, an angel was sent from heaven. And the angel traced a young virgin and said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. It's not because she was doing anything special. She was just aligned. And because she was aligned and her name was mentioned in the high heavens, she suddenly became a wonder. You know the problem with many Christians? They miss their seasons. They lose the cycles of their destiny. And so a door opens, they don't enter. Another door opens, they don't enter. If you miss your seasons, to a very large extent, you will never rise. And there are two things about a season that every spiritual man must be conscious of. Number one, I divided it into three. Bodies. Every time a new season is coming your way, you will discover that your appetites will begin to change. Find out from any spiritual man, he will tell you. That's why you have to be spiritually sensitive. So that when your appetites begin to change, you will know. There are certain seasons that are coming your way. Suddenly, hunger for prayer will increase. You will know this is not normal. Sometimes, desire for fasting will begin to increase. Sometimes, desire to give will begin to increase. Sometimes, desire to serve will begin to give, to increase. You just come to a place, you are not comfortable sitting down. You just want to serve. You just want to do something. They say, no, don't worry. You say, no, I want to serve. Because those burdens are required for you to be able to bet that season. The second indicator that the season has opened is encounters. Don't trivialize encounters. You went to sleep. You had a dream. The next day, the dream continued. You think it was normal. And then you still go back and you relax. You are about to miss out of destiny. Wise men, the moment they have an encounter, even if that encounter is faint, they will put pressure on that encounter until something divine is born out of it. Go and ask some of the people with the greatest destiny. No angel appeared to them. They were just reading the Bible and a verse of scripture became real to them. As faint as that encounter is, they will carry that verse and go for 40 days fasting. Just a verse. They will go for 40 days fasting and when they come back, a great business will be born. When you have encounters, don't talk about them. Go and war with them. Pray with them. Fast with them until those encounters become prophecies. It will open you to a great destiny. But people who don't know how men rise, when they have encounters, they trivialize it. When you want to rise in your season, you must do something about your encounters. And finally, warfares. 
most great seasons come with battles. Go and ask Moses, he will tell you. The moment his season manifested, Pharaoh became his enemy. In fact, he ran for his life. It's not every warfare you bind demons for. When certain warfares begin to come to you, go back to your closet and ask the Holy Ghost questions. Lord, what are you saying? Because sometimes we are too distracted. So the only way God will allow us to focus on our destiny is when he allows warfare. Suddenly everybody is gossiping you. Suddenly everybody is, is, is bitter against you. Suddenly your name is all over the place. Don't fight. Withdraw. And find out what is going on. What is going on? Perhaps the Joseph mantle is about to rest on you. Because when certain mantles come, they attract warfare. So most of your warfares are a summon to the secret place to ask God questions so that he can give you the compass of your destiny. He said the sons of Isaac, they had understanding of times and seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. First Chronicles 12, 22. You need to discern your season, number one. And to discern your season, you respond to burdens. To discern your season, you manage your encounters. And to discern your seasons, you interpret your warfare correctly. When you have done that, then the second requirement of season is action. He said they knew what Israel ought to do. Don't be inactive in the day of your manifestation. There are too many complacent Christians. There are too many inactive Christians. They sit down, they are telling themselves, if it will happen, it will happen. You have not succeeded before, that's why you are talking like that. Ask those who are making impact. They will tell you there's nothing like that. Everything happening is made to happen. Even the Bible says faith without works is dead. When God shows you a vision, you are starting a company. Go and start with your pure water. Start something and grow in it. Don't wait until the mega company appear. It will happen. God shows you you are an apostle to the nation. Start preaching in your neighborhood. People can say you are ambitious. Forget them. God shows you you are a miracle worker. Start looking for the sick. Pray for them. Go for hospital visitation. In fact, sometimes you will pray for two years. Nobody will be healed. Keep praying. That action you are taking is a school of the spirit. The fourth thing about lifting is humility. First Peter 5, verse 6 to 7. It says, God will exhort the humble, but he will resist the proud. These are powerful principles. Listen. The devil will always want to inspire you to prove a point. You don't have to. God is the one that proves points on your behalf. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. James 4.10 In due season, he said, God will exhort you. In Proverbs 29.23, he said, A man's pride shall bring him low. He said, But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. When you find men who are being lifted, I'm being lifted. I'm being lifted. Check. At the foundation of their life is a robust technology of humility. God does not read your action. He reads your heart first. He says, men look on the outward. He says, but God looks at the heart. If you want God to lift you, you must humble your heart in humility. The fifth way for lifting men is by wisdom. When God wants to raise you up, he will bless you with wisdom. There is something about wisdom that lifts men to the top. In Proverbs 23, 24, verse 3 and 4, it says, Through wisdom is an house builded. By understanding, it is established. And by knowledge, all the chambers are filled with good things. So, one of the ways God establishes a man or a system is by wisdom. In our world today, if you want the mighty to associate with you, come with wisdom. Nobody can despise wisdom. Wisdom is one of the key for rising. And if God gives you wisdom, there are two areas he will bless you with wisdom. Number one, with men. Many people don't rise because they don't know how to deal with men. The second aspect of wisdom God will give you is with resources. There are some people, the resources that you translate to their rising, they waste it. You can be more gifted than everybody yet languish in obscurity because your oppression is not encoded with wisdom. And then, number six, the way God lifts men is through prophecy. He said the house kept growing by the prophesying of Haggai the priest and Zacharias, the son of Edo.
every time prophecies go forth, men must rise. In Genesis 49 verse 10, when Jacob wanted to establish his children, it was not with donkeys and camels. It was with prophetic words. He said, gather around me, you sons of Jacob. I will tell you the things that will befall you. And in verse 10 of that scripture, he said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, neither the lawgiver from in between his feet, until Shiloh comes. And he made Judah a king forever by prophecy. See, nothing lifts men faster than prophecy. If you want to rise, if there's no prophet over your life, or God become the prophet over your life, wake up in the morning, carry scriptures, shoot them into your future. You want to rise? You rise by the words you speak. He said, put me in remembrance of my words. He said, by thy words, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. And so the sixth secret for rising is to chalk yourself with the word of God. Saturate your future with the word. He said, if the heavens be full of rain, of necessity, they must send water back to the earth. Finally, how do men rise? By the ministry of a sent man. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, he said they sent his word to Jacob. He lightened upon Israel. Many times, when God wants to lift men, he sends men to them. Paul encountered Jesus, Acts chapter 9, from verse 4 to verse 6, in his glory. And Jesus told him, go into the city. You'll be told what you must do. And Jesus went in verse 10 and troubled another man called Ananias to go and to ordain Paul into ministry. How can a man meet Jesus in glory and still need to meet another man? The reason many of us never rise is our arrogance. We think everything begins and ends with us. There are many kings that have never been ordained because they have despised their, their people who should ordain them. They think they are so big. And that is why when it has to do with men, the law of rising is the law of honor. He said, without every contradiction, the less is blessed, the better. And there are two categories of people you must honor. Number one, they are your parents. He said, honor your father and your mother. He said, this is the first commandment with promise. He said, if you do it, your days on earth shall be long. Ephesians 6, verse 2 and 3. And number two, they are spiritual men that God sends your way. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall ye prosper. See, some people think why we honor men is because of relevance by association. Church is not politics. Relevance by association may happen in the world, not in the kingdom. In this kingdom, it is the spirit of God that he takes from a man and puts on another man. If God does not invest that grace on you, if you like, hug them everywhere, it will translate to nothing. Even the men of God, some of them, their children don't carry what other people have received from them. Their children that carry their DNA and their names. Because there's nothing like relevance by association in the kingdom. It's transference of spirits. He said, get Joshua, a man in whom is the spirit. Lay your hands upon him. I will take some of the honor that is upon your life and put on him. That's how men rise.